My name is Andrew Hendrickson, and I'm an artist, writer, and currently a doctoral student at Duke University, where I think and work at the intersections of aesthetics, philosophy, and theology. I've been working with Hammond Harkins since 2016, when I resigned from working as an art professor in Ohio and moved to the East Coast to do a graduate program at Yale. There, I worked and studied under theologians, philosophers, writers, and artists. And working in theology, philosophy, or writing, while each a specific discipline of its own, has never been for me adjacent to or other than art making, but has been very squarely another iteration of engaging the question, how should I be in the world? And what frameworks do I use to ask that question in a coherent way? I don't think of myself as a painter so much as a maker more broadly, because different kinds of inquiries require different modes and mediums, I've worked in painting, sewing, installation, film, drawing, sculpture, and writing. My work is largely informed by my questions, by the places in life in which I feel some friction. The poet Kay Ryan says that her poems begin with an agitation, and this makes a lot of sense to me. Sometimes my work is informed by thinking about literary archetypes or poems that have been meaningful sometimes by narratives from the Hebrew Bible and my relationship to those narratives. Sometimes it is my thinking through the stories of building towers to the heavens or of ancient people stacking Ebenezer stones of remembrance. Sometimes it is my thinking about labor and piles, accumulations in which small parts make up the whole, or how inefficiency can render time as a form such that one can see time made tangible. In the work A Certain Kind of Eden, I was thinking about the church services of my childhood when, toward the end of the service, the pastor would ask for prayer requests, for something that these folks wanted the community to bear witness to. Sometimes it was a prayer for employment, or a health concern, or the grief around a wayward child, and folks would stand and announce what it was that was pressing down upon them. But sometimes, someone would stand up and say, Pastor, it's unspoken, and then sit back down. It was an amazing thing as a child to hear adults say that some things in life didn't have names, or maybe if they did have names, they just hadn't found the right ones yet. The Enduring Chill Blue, currently on view at Hammond Harkins, is a title taken from a short story of the same name by Flannery O'Connor. In this work, I was thinking about the ways in which days and years accumulate to become the piles that ultimately become a life. In this way, there is no such thing as a neutral matter. And how does one remain acutely attentive to and inhabit well the life one is living and make seismic adjustments as needed? I think in some real way an artist is never not working, never not sifting questions and finding poignant forms, never not observant of the million common mysteries and miracles that make up a day. Sometimes one knows with what one will resonate, be it a sculpture, or a painting, or a song, but I find just as often I'm compelled by the things in the corner of life that I couldn't have expected or foreseen. The way someone's sigh in line at the grocery store seems to a gesture at an entire world. Or the way someone's gait while walking seems to betray something of themselves. The way a memory can send a shiver down your spine or make you reconsider something you thought you knew well. Or the way in which long shadows in the late afternoon can render an ache in the chest. These are among the slippery, elusive things that I think the arts attempt to hold long enough to see rightly, maybe only in hint and trace, but nonetheless with hopeful desperation.